good morning students today we are going to look at how the performance of tcp can be improved in mobile networks so we are going to look at tcp in single hop networks examples are wireless lans and tcp in multi hop wireless networks example is mobile ad hoc networks okay so let's start So let's start by looking at the performance of TCP in single hop networks. So we are going to look at how TCP has been improved. So the first method that we are going to look at is indirect TCP, also known as ITCP. Then fast retransmission. Fast retransmission we have also looked in traditional TCP. then the third method is going to be snooping tcp also called stcp mobile tcp also known as mtcp and freeze tcp so all these five methods come under your tcp in single hop networks so we are basically looking at performance improvement of tcp in mobile networks so for today we will study the first method that is indirect tcp also it is known as itcp so there were two main reasons that itcp came about okay one reason was the existing tcp by existing tcp i mean the tcp that is used with fixed wired networks does not perform so well with wireless networks okay we have discussed that in fixed networks in wired networks if packets are lost tcp normally assumes that it is a congestion has occurred in the network and then it starts to activate the congestion avoidance or congestion control methods but you know that in a wireless network in a mobile network packets could be lost due to congestion or they could be lost due to other reasons like mobility of the device or simply a connection may be lost because a handover is taking place from one tower to another tower okay or you have moved out of the range of the tower so that's why you have lost the connection so it does not mean always that because the packets are lost it doesn't mean that in a wireless network all the time there is a congestion okay also we know that there are a lot of computer systems already in use in the world and they are already using the wired type of tcp so it does not make economic sense to simply change the tcp of the entire world okay just to give you an example suppose nowadays we all are using 4g networks okay so if we want to use 5g or 6g or some other kind of high speed networks okay which are being developed a lot of investment has to be done the infrastructure has to be changed you cannot use your 4g mobile and expect to run 5g on it okay so the same way the tcp that were designed previously cannot be entirely discarded if you discard that tcp and you make a new tcp then you will have to make a lot of investment in the existing systems so that's why due to these two reasons it led to the development of indirect tcp okay so the first reason was that the existing tcp performs badly with the wireless networks and the second reason was in the tcp the existing tcp within the fixed wired networks cannot be just changed overnight okay so now let's look at what is indirect tcp also it is known as itcp so basically in your indirect tcp you are having if you remember your packet delivery diagram from mobile ip okay 
you are having your correspondent node okay which is connected through the internet to the foreign agent okay assuming that now your mobile host is in the foreign network and this is your mobile host okay it could be a mobile it could be a laptop some device that can move around okay so basically our tcp is divided into two parts the first part is a wired tcp or your standard tcp and that is the connection from your computer to the foreign agent okay the foreign agent is nothing but a router it's a access point okay so this connection the wired connection okay which is happening through the internet is your normal tcp the standard tcp and then there is a special tcp between a mobile node and your foreign agent okay so there is a special connection from your mobile host to a foreign agent this tcp is different from the standard tcp okay this is a specially designed tcp for wireless networks so your wireless tcp is a specially designed tcp for wireless devices for connecting the wireless devices to your foreign agent or your router okay and your standard tcp is the same as what is in use currently so basically due to this arrangement due to this arrangement the computer is not aware of the wireless tcp okay the computer is not aware of the wireless tcp so your computer which is also known as your correspondent node is not aware of this wireless tcp okay it feels that it is connected it is connected through the internet to the mobile node which in this case is not the actual mobile node but it is your foreign agent so for your wired tcp or for your standard tcp the foreign agent acts as the mobile node okay the foreign agent acts as the mobile node so the correspondent node is not aware about this arrangement it feels it is sending packets directly to the mobile node but in reality it is sending all the packets to the foreign agent and it is the job of the foreign agent to buffer these packets and forward these packets to the actual mobile host okay so please remember this for the wired part of the tcp or your wired connection the correspondent node communicates with a foreign agent and the foreign agent acts as a proxy for the mobile node or your mobile host the correspondent node is not aware that it is not sending the packets to the mobile node but instead it is sending the packets to the foreign agent okay it feels it is sending the packets directly to the mobile node but that is not what happens okay similarly for the wireless tcp the mobile host feels that it is communicating with the correspondent node but in reality it communicates with the foreign agent okay the foreign agent acts as a proxy for the correspondent node so for the wireless tcp for the wireless tcp the foreign agent acts as a correspondent node okay so the mobile host is not aware of this arrangement it feels it is transmitting the data to the correspondent node directly but in reality it transmits only to the foreign agent the foreign agent is in turn responsible for buffering the data sent by the mobile host and transmitting it or forwarding the data further to the correspondent node okay so i hope you all have understood this so how it works is suppose tcp the correspondent node 
wants to send some data to the mobile node. So it will send the packet over the internet to the foreign agent. Okay. The foreign agent buffers the data, buffers the data that has arrived and acknowledges the data. Okay. The foreign agent, like I told you before, X as a proxy for the mobile host. X as a proxy for the mobile host. So whatever data the correspondent node is sending, since it is acting as a proxy for the mobile host, it sends an acknowledgement. So suppose this packet was sent with the sequence number one, then the acknowledgement one is sent to the correspondent node. Okay, so after sending the acknowledgement, the foreign agent takes this packet that it has buffered and forwards this to the mobile host. Okay, when the mobile host gets this packet, it sends an acknowledgement for that packet. This acknowledgement that is sent by the mobile host is, is read by the foreign agent and discarded the mobile node feels that it has sent the for uh, cross uh, the acknowledgement to the correspondent node but in reality it sends the acknowledgement to the foreign agent itself okay and the acknowledgement that is received by the foreign agent is discarded why is the foreign agent discarding this acknowledgement because because it has already acknowledged the packet that it had received previously. Okay. So as you can see here, in normal TCP connection, if there was a sender and a receiver, if there was a sender and a receiver, the sender would send a packet, okay, some packet, and the receiver would acknowledge it. Okay. The receiver would send a corresponding acknowledgement but in indirect tcp in a indirect tcp the sender the correspondent node which is the sender sends the packet to the foreign agent which acts as a proxy for the mobile host okay so since it is acting as a proxy for the mobile host it replies with the acknowledgement it replies with the acknowledgement So the correspondent node now feels that this packet has got delivered to the mobile host. But in reality, where has got the packet has got delivered? Packet has got delivered only at the foreign agent. Okay. It has only got delivered till the foreign agent. Now the foreign agent will take this packet. Okay. That it received. It received this packet one and forward that packet to the actual mobile host. Okay, so it forwards this packet. The mobile host, as usual, since it's a TCP connection, will reply with the acknowledgement for that packet that it received. So this packet, when it reaches the foreign agent, now mobile host feels that this packet has been sent by the correspondent node. Okay, because the foreign agent acts as the correspondent node for the wireless TCP. So it feels that this packet has been sent by the correspondent node. It does not know that this packet was buffered by the foreign agent and the foreign agent is sending it across. So it sends the corresponding acknowledgement. It feels this acknowledgement will get delivered to the correspondent node. But a foreign agent, since it has already sent this acknowledgement here, it discards this upon receiving. So it discards the acknowledgement sent by the mobile host. So this is the way your indirect DCP works. Okay. So if during the transmission any packets are lost, okay, then it is the job of the foreign agent to retransmit the packet. Because whatever packets are being sent, are buffered by the foreign agent 
So it is the job of the foreign agent to retransmit any lost data. So you can just read here. Now, we had studied in the mobile IP that a mobile host will move from one foreign network to another foreign network. And we had also seen that when a mobile host goes to a foreign network, how it registers with a foreign agent. So assuming that we had a connection here, okay, there was a mobile host, this was a foreign agent, this was a correspondent node, okay. And this is the indirect TCP connection. This this is the wired TCP, okay, and this is your wireless TCP. So the TCP connection has already been established, and data is being exchanged. Now, since this is the mobile host, this mobile host can always move around. Suppose it moves around to a different foreign network. As as a result, the since this is a new foreign network. Therefore, it establishes connection with a new foreign agent. Okay, so there's a new foreign agent. So now, since this data exchange was already taking place as the mobile host was moving, okay, we cannot close this connection. We cannot close this connection and start a new connection. Okay, because doing that will result in all the packets that are buffered at the foreign agent being lost okay so we cannot just simply close the existing tcp connection from the old network and start a new connection on the new foreign network okay so therefore the state of the entire tcp along with the connections the socket states have to be sent or exchanged between the old foreign agent and the new foreign agent So you can read here. It must send all the buffer data also. It should inform about location. Also, it must uh, migrate the sockets. Okay. Because the sockets contain the current state of the TCP connection, sequence number, addresses, ports, etc. Also, it is very essential to transfer the connection because the correspondent node and the mobile node should not notice any changes in the connection. It should not result in loss of connection. So here are some of the advantages with indirect TCP. So first of all, it does not need any major changes in TCP in fixed network. Also, because you are partitioning into two different connections, errors on the wireless link will not get propagated onto the fixed network. Then, like we have discussed, it's dangerous to use new mechanisms without knowing how they will behave. Also, you could use different kinds of transport layers. Disadvantages are loss of end-to-end -end semantics. Okay, so we have discussed this before. What is end-to-end -end semantics? So, in end-to-end -end semantics, the meaning is there's a sender, there's a receiver. So, the sender sends a packet to the receiver. You expect the receiver 
to acknowledge it. So if the sender has sent the first packet, you expect the receiver upon receiving the first packet successfully to acknowledge that first packet. And this acknowledgement goes directly to the sender. Okay. In between there may be routers, but the, the, the packets are delivered and the acknowledgements are delivered directly between the sender and the receiver. Okay. So by that I mean the same packets are sent across. Whereas in indirect TCP, okay, it need not happen like that. It need not happen like that. There are two different connections. Okay. So when the sender sends a packet, suppose the sender sends a packet. Sender sends a packet. Okay. The packet has not got delivered to the mobile host, but a foreign agent will reply with an acknowledgement. So this is the packet. This is the acknowledgement. The packet has not yet got delivered to the mobile host, but it has got acknowledged. So it will lead to a wrong sense of delivery from the point of view of the sender. Okay. Similarly, this packet then will be forwarded to the mobile host by the foreign agent. Whatever acknowledgement comes will be discarded by the foreign agent. So the foreign agent never forwards the actual acknowledgement of the mobile host to the correspondent node. So therefore, we say there is loss of end-to-end -end semantics because the foreign agent is responsible for buffering the packets and acknowledging the packets. The receiver is no longer directly involved in acknowledging the packets sent by the correspondent node. Mobile host does acknowledge the packet sent by the foreign agent, but that same packet is not sent directly by the correspondent node. Okay, so I hope you have understood and thank you for listening.